All right, you guys, let's get straight down to work on the Tesla Model 3. Got some things to do today, so let's get it done. Hey guys, welcome back. We got a lot of stuff to do today, so let's just get right down to it. First up on the docket, we got e-bikes to ship out and e-scooters. I'm gonna package up the e-scooters first. You know, start with the easy stuff, work your way into the hard stuff. Let's get these things out to some more happy customers. I'm incredibly grateful for all of you guys who purchased the e-bikes. Basically sold me out in the first day. I can't say thank you enough, so thank you. All right, with that done, let's go ahead and unbox the Autel EV charger. This thing you can get on Amazon for like $600 or something. It is a stage two EV charger. So here it is, this is the Autel EV charger. It's not huge and you know, it's the perfect size. It's not too big, won't take up much wall space, but it's big enough to look professional and it just overall has a really cool look to it. I'm sure the electrician will know what to do when he gets here, but it looks like it comes with all the mounting hardware you would need to install this. Currently I'm using just the 110 volt uh, stage one charger, it, it charges like five miles per hour or something. So you leave it overnight and it'll give you like half a, half a charge, which is totally fine for what I do. I've never needed to charge it faster than that yet. Stage two charger, I do plan to put just right out here on the wall by the breaker box. We just use the garage for so much stuff. I don't ever park cars in there. And so I would never be charging the Tesla in the garage. And the Autel charger is rated for exterior use. And I feel like having an EV charger installed to a degree will also increase the home value when we go to sell this house at some point. So if nothing else, I'll get the $600 back out of the Autel charger when we sell this house. We're not looking to sell like super fast. It is a nice house, but it does already feel pretty cramped. We moved in here like two and a half years ago and it's kind of just that thing how you outgrow your space, you know? We just have a lot in this garage and as nice of a three car garage as it is, it's just, you know, it's starting to feel a little bit small. All right, and just like that, all the e-bikes have been sent out. And at this point, about a week later, they're all delivered, everybody's happy, except one, UPS really effed up a package during transit, so. But anyway, as you guys can see, there's no more e-bikes, luckily, in this garage. And just in that small time frame, we already got more boxes in, but these are actually exciting. These are not just e-bike reviews. And we got a mystery box that I'm not gonna show you guys just yet, pretty exciting. And then we got a freaking insane thing right here. But my task right now is to pull the Tesla in. We are gonna test out the supercharging abilities today, but I definitely do wanna try to get those mods that we have on. First, let's get this cleaned up, that pulled in, and we'll get straight to work. All right, so first off, we have carbon fiber spoiler for the back. This isn't like a super cheap one. It was like probably to the tune of 200 something dollars. And then if you guys know anything about Teslas, if to jack up the car, you actually need, you don't need, I've already done it without these, but there's little holes underneath the car to actually put these in. You have to get like jack pucks for the stupid car. So anyway, this pack of four was like 16 bucks. So not a big deal off of eBay. And then I don't even know if these are gonna work to be honest, but I have some wheel spacers. We're gonna see if these will bring the wheels out a little bit. Like the arrow wheels, I don't hate, but I feel like if they were out just a little bit wider, it would probably just look better. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. I was sent a lowering kit for the car, but I don't think I'm gonna install it just to keep like the ride quality and whatnot. And it's a daily driver. I don't feel like doing all that work to lower it a little bit would you know, increase the value of the car at all. <laughs> In a sense of just, you know, comfort of actually driving the thing and resale value. I don't even know if that would be worth installing the coilovers. Plus it's a cheap kit I was sent. <laughs> so chances are it just would ride like crap once we actually did all the work. So now I'll get to work installing these basic mods just to kind of freshen up the look a little bit. And then we'll go see if supercharging works.
All right, so this is the carbon fiber spoiler that I'm about to install. It also comes with some beautiful Chinese adhesion promoter, which is probably just alcohol wipes. <laughs> Very dry alcohol wipes. Wow, I will use my own then. How about that? All right, I was definitely not expecting wheel spacers, just simple wheel spacers to make that big of a difference. But that really makes a huge difference in just the stance of this car, that's crazy. I kind of just eyeballed it, but it's the perfect spacing. So I did one inch in the rear and then I think seven eighths inch, but I'll just pull the listing up for you really quick right here. Came out total for all four was about 200, just over $200. But man, that makes it look so much better. The stock wheels just looked so small before, but now you bring them out a little bit and it just makes them look a little bit bigger. I do think that it would look better lowered a little bit, sitting on the wheels a little bit better now that they're widened a little bit, but I just don't think it would be worth it in the end. I don't know, that's just how I feel. So maybe that'll come in the future because I already have you know, coilovers for this thing, but I don't realistically think it's worth the effort at this point. I just don't know if I'm gonna end up selling this or keeping this because I mean, I do have a freaking S-Class that is like the ultimate luxury car basically. And it's just such a smooth ride and it's not electric. So you can go literally anywhere you wanna go, but this one has its limitations and I can probably sell it for just over what I actually paid for it. So I could get my money back out of it easily if I wanted to. Um, the spoiler actually looks really nice as well. It's just crazy how, you know, much better it looks with those basic little things it took me about two hours to get all this done so anyway if you have a tesla model 3 you know two hours of your time and 400 dollars or so um, you'll have a really nice spoiler and a well stanced wheels anyway obviously this car is still not perfect i still need to redo some of this body work it's not bugging me as much you know as it should probably anymore obviously it does not look great but it doesn't look noticeable enough to really care about it like right now it's not a super pressing thing but i definitely will end up redoing these corners here as i told you the shop kind of they i don't think they lined it up with the bumper as they should have who were pulling the dent and me being pretty new to actually dent pulls and body work in this you know of this style i didn't think to keep the bumper on when i was doing the body filler and it did not line up when I put the bumper back on. So that was definitely my bad and it's something, you know, lesson learned and I'll just redo it at some point soon. But for now, it looks good enough to where I'm just driving it around, getting a feel for the car and uh, kind of just enjoying it after, you know, working on it for a bit. While the pieces actually did fit up really well when they're positioned correctly, I think it's kind of just overkill if we're keeping the stock, you know, kind of feel of the car. I feel like this is gonna be A, overkill, B, more work than I need to do on this thing, and C, it is destructive to the lower bumper of this car. You have to screw it in and everything. And while that's not a big deal, I, I feel like the end result would not be worth the actual effort. But again, this is something maybe I'll do in the future. Obviously, there's three separate pieces in this box not just that one that's just for the right side of the car all right so this is the autel maxi charger you can get this thing on amazon for 600 bucks right now i'm registering for the app which has been a pretty easy process so i have no complaints there easy enough setup you just scan the qr code in the owner's manual and it links it straight up it has you input the price per kilowatt hour in your your area and so it can actually judge cost and what's actually charging you per charge. That's actually really cool. And then of course you can set a bunch of different parameters, auto start, schedule charging, max current is 50 amps. All right, and with setup complete, let's actually get this thing charging up. This is a uh, J1772 charger when it comes. So naturally you need to pick up a Tesla uh, adapter for it, but that's definitely easy enough and it clicks right in there. Just like in uh, Tesla fashion, you just plug it right in there. Wait for the thing to turn green. There we go. All right, so there you guys have it charging up. We're at 157 miles. It says one hour, 10 minutes remaining. Last night, I actually charged this car up from basically dead to full. It was at probably 15% battery and uh, it was charging it up in four and a half hours. 
to full. So definitely pretty quick. And even now just having connected the app and doing all the software interface and everything with the EV charger, there's been no complications or any inconveniences using this system. Install went fine. It cost me $350 for a professional electrician to install that, you know, everything included. And just overall functionality, I've never had a single problem with it so far. I've probably charged a car up four or five times with it so far. And so far it's been a really nice system to be working with and it charges the car up pretty quick. This is my first stage two charger that I've owned and already I can definitely highly recommend. And it's just a dang clean looking unit. The cord is definitely long enough to reach basically all the way down a driveway. So if you're working with confined space, um, kind of like I am right now, it's definitely gonna do the job for you. So if you guys are in the market for a stage two EV charger, definitely hit up Autel. Just check them out at least. Look at the specs. You guys can do your own research, obviously. Thank you Autel for sending it out to me. So there's gonna be a link below if you guys wanna check them out. I'm loving it so far and I'm really enjoying the EV life so far. And you guys can see via the app that it is currently charging how many kilowatt hours have been actually put into the car and the duration that it's been going so far. But yeah, this charger makes it even more fun to just be able to you know, get home, charge up, and then leave again within a couple hours and have pretty much a full battery again. Yeah, check them out, highly recommended. All right, there's all the superchargers. Hopefully I can find one. <laughs> Pulling in, I got 100 miles left on the charge. So we'll see if this will work. I'm pretty optimistic. I think, I think it'll go well. Look at that, it shows the superchargers right there on the screen. All right, boys, I just parked. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what it does. Freaking give it a shot. Some heavy cables, holy crap. All right, let's take a look. It's blue, hey, it's green, how about that? Let's see if it's, let's see what the charging speed is. Charging, 20 minutes remaining. This thing supercharges, boys. <laughs> that's what I'm freaking talking about. High usage supercharge station, that's what I'm freaking talking about. Told you guys, I feel like, see, I saw some on Copart salvage title Teslas will oftentimes on the screen have a red border around the entire screen, like a warning border with the VIN number at the bottom that says like alert or something. Those ones I guarantee you are the ones that don't supercharge, but this one didn't have a fault on the display. I feel like Tesla runs the VIN of a severely damaged vehicle that identifies issues with the system, electrical system, car body. If it identifies too many faults, I guarantee you it throws a, you know, no supercharging um, for that VIN number. But my theory is, you know, mine was just not damaged enough and there was not a single fault on the display. All the sensors were there. Everything was 100% intact. And so, hey, we could supercharge. I like it, I love it. Basically a brand new Tesla for like $24,000. Look at all these cool Teslas supercharging right along with me. So there you guys have it. It does in fact supercharge and I could not be more excited about it. So I guess that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. We have a lot going on currently in life. I'm still shooting weddings. I got one tomorrow. Well, we have two tomorrow. My dude is at a second wedding. I'll be at one you know, like an hour and a half away from me. Anyway, check out all these Tesla owners over here. Check out that wheel spacing, check out his wheel spacing. My wheel spacing, his wheel spacing. I see how that works. So it tells you, so it had seven on that when I drove in, which means there were seven available. Four is available now. So it must have gained a few homies over here. It's actually like really good tech. So the next day I actually ended up taking the Tesla to the wedding, which was about 70 miles away in the mountains. I just wanted to see how accurate the estimated range was for a decently far distance. I was actually very surprised how accurate the mileage is on the Tesla. When you enter your destination on the Tesla, it actually gives you an estimated battery percentage left when you get there. And when I got there, it was actually within 1% of the estimated battery percentage. I was really surprised how accurate it was. So it's like, I'm learning to trust it more and more. My past experience with the Nissan Leaf obviously was not the same story. It was estimated like, you know, 48 miles of range, but you'd actually get like 24 or something. The technology on the Tesla is very good, that's for sure. And after this weekend's trip, I can definitely trust it fully, basically. I was saying I might sell this thing, but now that I know it works, I don't know if I should, because we got charging stations all over California. I could pretty much go anywhere I want to. And I know it's kind of lame, but we did jump ahead just a little bit in time here but I got some more fun stuff coming and I can't wait to show you guys a lot of this stuff. So that's gonna do it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know it's just kind of a, a video between videos. Kind of did a, a lot of miscellaneous stuff, but that's kind of just life. So that's how it goes. 
Hope you guys enjoyed it anyway, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.